What's going on everybody and welcome back to the shop. I've managed to sneak out here into the garage uh, just for a few minutes this evening to try and get a little bit more done. So we're still working on Chucky's car trying to get the uh, the new 10 point cage all wrapped up. Uh, I did get everything fitted on our uh, well last weekend uh, and I'm going to be focusing over the next couple of evenings and into the weekend on uh, the details to get it wrapped up. So there's quite a bit that goes into a roll cage after the tubing is placed. Obviously we need to weld all that stuff in, but there's quite a bit to do uh, regarding, um, you know, seat belt anchors uh, and uh, the swing outs, of course, the seat back brace, getting it all painted and stuff like that. So that's really what we're gonna be focused on over the next few days uh, to try and get that, try and get that part all wrapped up. All right. So we are going to put swing outs in this car and there's a couple of different ways that you can do a swing out that is uh, acceptable by NHRA. Um, and I'm sure that there are ways to do it that are not acceptable by NHRA. But what we need to make sure of is that this thing will serve uh, to a, um, uh, an 850 uh, ET range. So the... The number one thing I think that if I read the if I read the the certification requirements correctly is that the bolt needs to be in double shear, meaning that you have to have you can't have just like I guess well I'll just see if I can't show you. So this is a Clevis style kit from Road roads race cars that's it uh, so like this would be single shear and that's not okay um, whereas this is double shear because uh, it's got I guess two two points of contact uh, well I guess this would be a shear point and this would be a shear point uh, on either side of the uh, the tongue. So, so this would be the tongue seat side, and this would be, I guess, the groove side. So, or tab and groove, or tongue and groove, or whatever you want to call it. So, these are really nice. Uh, like I said, Road Race Cars makes these. Um, not a paid advertisement by any stretch of the means. Um, so, but they're around a hundred and a quarter, a hundred and fifty, or something like that for the. Uh, for one pair, one pair does one door bar, so we'll put in both. And they come in all different sizes, so you can run it one and three quarter, uh, one and five eighths, depending on if it's a, a bar or a cage. And then uh, they've got them in different, um, I guess the OD for this would be different based on the ID of the tube. So this is for uh, mild steel, which is uh, I think 118 thou wall minimum thickness. I think it's 134 thou wall uh, is the thickness on the stuff that we have. Um, and so this should fit. Okay, so the first thing that I did on uh, getting these door bars, uh, the swing outs in is that I, I went ahead and I put a fairly significant bead, at least what I could reach. You know, the intention again, again is to actually pull the cage uh, to do the majority of the welding. And uh, when we put the cage back in, of course we want it to be in the same spot that it's in. So uh, I, I do that a few ways. One is I, I tack, um, <clears throat> tack the tubes to the floor plates uh, in accessible places that I can come in with a cold chisel and break these off. Uh, and I do that with a cold chisel and not with a uh, a cutoff wheel because a cutoff wheel will remove material from the tack and the idea here is that with a cold chisel uh, we'll break the tack so that when we put it back that it can kind of index itself on that break so <clears throat> but anyways um, so I went ahead and I, I, I put a fairly significant uh, weld uh, on both the, 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 the bottom and the top here of the, the door bar so that when I come in with the sawzall to cut this out, that those are most definitely not moving. 
and then I can fully weld the rest of that out of the car uh, without worry. So good thing is with, uh, with putting in these uh, clevises is that we're, we've got some leeway uh, in terms of how much material we need to remove from the door bar itself. I mean, we're going to be taking a chunk out, probably a two inch chunk on both the top and the bottom. So kind of just set this on here to kind of determine about where I want this thing because when I when the when it swings we need to make sure it's not going to run into the car so I think I want to put it somewhere about somewhere about there so and that'll give us the swing that we need so go ahead and mark this Okay, then the next step here will be to get this to be a nice square uh, cut. And uh, this is just a lot of trial and error, um, back and forth until it's all si situated. So. Okay, so now we've got um both pieces fit where i want the the hinge point to be and where i want the clasp to be so <clears throat> next step of course i mean we just added a bunch of uh, bunch of distance there uh, with these so we'll get a measurement all right i'm gonna call that 43 and 7 8 that's maybe just a touch long. Let me trim this real fast. Ta-da! Now, so, I need to put okay so I'm gonna weld this in such a way I'm gonna orient that tongue to where it's actually pointed up a little bit as it goes out that way if you're in the car and you're all built it in you don't happen to chase the thing if it's slanted down. So we'll go ahead and throw a couple of tacks on those. Tacks on those and it should be good to go. This kind of felt like I took my measurements really well. So um, of course things will move just a little bit but uh, when we weld stuff but um, I'll show you guys how to adjust that whenever whenever we get in there. I need to do the other side and then I can go ahead and pull this cage out and uh, we can do some more welding. So I feel pretty good about that. Ta-da! Look at that. Look at that. It kind of makes me want one in something a white car. You know, because I don't have enough work to do. got the cage out. It is now time to weld all of the seams up. So quite a bit of welding to do. 
going to clear myself a space on the workbench, which I use doubles as a welding bench, and get to work. Try and set it on here, so I'll just weigh myself 37 pounds. We'll call that 35 pounds. Seven, we'll call that 37, uh, 70 pounds. That's about 20 pounds, so 90 pounds. That's about what I figured. gonna about wrap it up for this episode I've got everything tacked in place and uh, well we've got the main hoop uh, well tacked in I've got the eight pillars tacked in the rear strut bars are tacked in the halo is fully welded to the main hoop now there's some odds and ends uh, that I got to wrap up I got to put the diagonal bars in uh, yeah but uh, the lion's share of the work of getting the cage back in the car uh, after fully welding and, and painting is, is done. Now there's quite a bit left to do on the car. Uh, we're, we still gotta get into some of this wiring and uh, we're gonna do, uh, put the, of course, put the dash back in uh, and we're gonna refit the seats and stuff. Um, and uh, of course I've got uh, some exhaust goodies to do uh, as well. So, but I'm really excited about how this has turned out. Really, really pleased. Um, everything seems to be working uh, kind of as I envisioned, which 
is really nice because you know sometimes it doesn't work out that way uh, but anyways good good progress so we'll catch you on the next one thanks again guys